actually quite easy. You just need to read the slide if you cannot hear me. Uh, so first, welcome to Skip the Lunch for listening about uh, me speaking about uh, Docker and Ansible and everything. Uh, my name is Michael, and I would start to ask, please, uh, do not take picture of me. Uh, like, do not want to do that. And if I do not tell two people, they do that. Uh, where I am beside a French-speaking uh, old uh, sysadmin guy who do not want to take picture. I'm system administrator at Red Hat, which is a company that you may have heard of uh, for the open source and startup team, which is a team that you likely not have heard of, uh, which is um, helping upstream strategic project for Red Hat um, to be successful. So most of the time that means doing configuration, um, not configuration management, community management, or design, or system administration, when you get a system administrated by developer, you can imagine how bad it is. Well, it's exactly that, but worse. And so um, my life so far, I've been uh, since three years doing that, managing Gluster.org, ManagerIQ.org, deploying cloud, and this kind of stuff. We want to get uh, infrastructure maintained by the community, which means most of the time being maintained by the same developers that most of the time did a suboptimal uh, mess uh, when given uh, root access. And I did that first by uh, being a puppet guy. I like puppet very much, except that for people who already have used puppet, it's harder to install and harder for developers to group. So I started to look at Ansible um, because it was simple. Each time I was uh, giving a talk everywhere, lots of people knew about it and said, yeah, they were happy, but it's slow and everything, so we know. Um, just to make sure everybody did heard about Ansible can raise their hand. Just to check. Okay, so there was still half of the people who didn't, so you're gonna have uh, five slides on that. I can speak up. Somebody's coming. Somebody's coming. Somebody's coming. Okay, I, is it better? Oh. Okay, so, mm, is it better? So, let's go back to Ansible. So, Ansible is an orchestration tool. Uh, for people who are not sysadmin, because I know there is student and everything that's running some task on uh, your cluster of server, even if it's sometimes a cluster of one single server, sometimes it's much bigger. And something like deploying a new application, shutting it down, shutting the monitoring because you do not want to get page at the same time and everything. People started to use that for orchestration, then moved to um, deployment. When compared to a Puppet, one of the big advantages is it's agentless. Uh, which mostly means that you do not depend on uh, one specific version of the agent. Uh, it just used by default uh, SSH, but we will see later that it can use something else, such as Docker and container. It's really simple to explain what it does. That's why it's not a good uh, topic for presentation, because in five minutes you have already explained everything. So that's just the concept of a remote execution of module. For example, if you want to get fired, it's quite easy. You just uh, use that, which will shut down all your server which, as I said, is um, uh, bad for production, but it's nice to test uh, what happens in case of catastrophe. Um, since just shutting down the server is not enough, I mean, there is also the concept of a playbook, uh, which is executing a set of steps based on a YAML file, uh, because XML was too old, so we decided to use a YAML. So it's like a script, but... Shit. It's not a script. Uh, I say that because there is a lot of people who come who say, yeah, I would like to do that, do that, and that. Uh, basically, what they want is a bash script or a Python script, but it, it's not a script. It's supposed to be different. If you want to get Python, well, it's not that there is Python. If you want to do Perl, you can do Perl. If you want to do Ruby, you can also do Perl. It's almost the same. <laughs> and it's one of the new hotness. I was last week at a conference uh, in the Czech Republic, and I have a trick. Uh, when I want to go speak about something, I just try to add with Docker, with Ansible for anything. Like this afternoon, it will be SDN with Ansible. Today, it's a container with Ansible. I did try community with Ansible. This one got refused, but uh, most of the time it worked. And there was like something 10 uh, talk. It was a Red Hat sponsor conference, so that's why a lot of people are speaking about Ansible. And yeah, it's quite popular among developers because it's simple. Each time I try to do training, they ask me directly the complicated question instead of the simple stuff that I did prepare because 
I'm sysadmin, I'm lazy. If I can just read the documentation for people in exchange of food, I will do it. It turns out that's not what they want. They want my brain. Not like zombie, like developer, even if the difference is not that uh, obvious at first. And speaking about stuff uh, popular among developers, um, so there is Docker, same. Everybody did heard Docker, someone coming from Mars, where there is no internet in three years. No? Can people who heard about Docker raise their hand? OK, so that's almost as popular as Ansible. But some, since people uh, didn't raise their hand, well, again, five slides. It's not at all filler for the conference, I promise. So what is Docker? Docker is also the new hotness, which is revolution. Um, the revolution last year was cloud, now it's container. And it's a container engine, which uh, manage, build, and run container. And most of the time, when we say container to old sysadmins, they will say, yeah, the Solaris stuff, or Elixir, or Virtuoso, or whatever. And this time, it's completely different. It's not like we are taking the same stuff and repackaging for marketing reasons. I mean, that's not what happened in the industry at all. And the idea here is mostly to get prepackaged single process execution environment, uh, mostly for microservices. People that have been there since a long time think that a microservices is old stuff. That's what we got with the enterprise Java Bean and SOR and all kinds of trendy technology from the last 10 years. Um, it also manages the network, the disk, and everything. And so since I'm a sysadmin, and I think that being a sysadmin means more than just playing quick and complaining about developer. Easier to fix the audio. OK, so if suddenly I start to be much louder, it's because someone is fixing the audio. It's not because I want to really, it's not because I'm really motivated by Docker. So I try to. <laughs> I tried to use uh, Docker first to solve my problem. My first problem was to run Prosody for some Fedora server with an old version of Prosody because I like to live dangerously. I use Fedora on my server. And it turned out that, well, it do not work that well. Um, there is some. <laughs> there is. So, yeah? Keep that. OK. <laughs> so if I sound like a robot, it's not because someone is trying to replace me. <laughs> um, and it's not the Docker people trying to shut me down either. So we first had uh, some issue. Well, no, we first. I first had an issue. I will stop uh, talking to me using Wary with UID and permission, because uh, Docker is supposed to be fully isolated. like. You have your Docker environment, and it's not supposed to communicate except using the web, REST API, and, and everything like this. So yeah, first try, well, problem with UID and permission. OK, not working. Second attempt, uh, one of my work is building static website, and we are using a wonderful uh, Ruby uh, middleware, which is wonderful because thanks to it, I'm never out of work. I mean, I will be likely be forced to maintain it until uh, the end of my life, which is great, because a lot of people are looking for work, and I have uh, more than enough. And of course, because this is Ruby, this is using all kinds of gem, and we did hit some issue about catching with Docker, so it quickly broke too often for that, and nope, not solving any issue. So then I said, OK, it's not working for uh, the stuff that you are trying to use, but what about the use case of Docker, which is using your own custom uh, code? And it turned out that, well, 10 years ago, I was trying to learn uh, Django. So I took the tutorial. I created my own uh, blog engine, because it's a tutorial for Django. And yeah, I decided to modernize it, which is mostly uh, moving to Django 1 to 1.2, 1.1, 1.3, and everything. And it's quite great. I did read all the release notes, and half of the code got to be thrown away. That's so nice with the uh, development. And it was the same. It was taking lots of time despite catching, because the Docker file was inside the source code, so everything had to restart from scratch. The application was uh, three different uh, Docker image. So I was making a modification, waiting 10 minutes, playing quick, seeing it break, making a modification, and everything. Again, uh, developer best practice. So I said, yeah, maybe I'm not doing it right. And I started to look at the Docker file best practice. and. The first one is do not use root, which is something that it's quite nice because nobody does that. Everybody starts everything in root. And when you are root inside the container, it's the same outside. I mean, everybody has seen matrix. When Neo is root inside the matrix, you manage to do stuff outside. 
which is a plot hole in the movie, but which is a reality in the case of uh, Docker. There is also the whole part about cleaning your system after installing package, which make uh, Docker files so uh, readable because suddenly you have lines that require to get uh, two screens just to be uh, displayed. There is the whole part about uh, layer squashing, and all of these are something that should be done by default. And it's not what you cannot do because the format is frozen. But as far as I know, and if there is someone from Docker that can tell to me I'm wrong, I would be happy to change that slide. It will be too late because the presentation is recorded, but um, it's not formally specified. So that means that, well, you cannot do any change, but you cannot make another implementation. It's also not extensible. Um, I mean, lots of uh, people here are likely uh, maybe packager or know how RPM work. In RPM, you have RPM macro, which is well, nice when it works, quite horrible when it don't, don't. You have Debian command, you have image function and everything. Each time you want to do a package, and the Docker image is basically a package because you want to distribute a binary to be executed, which is the whole reason of having a package. Well, you do not have that extensibility. The same, you do not have anything which is machine readable directly. I mean, you can always do a parser, but a parser with something which is uh, not specified and using something not as good as uh, XML. And I mean, if I say that uh, I would prefer XML than the format, it's quite bad for the format. And that means uh, to no obvious uh, way to enforce the policy. For example, if you look at other packaging system where you have package.json, you can trivially run it, look at the content, and then do whatever you want. And so yeah, that most of the time require manual change to enforce best, best practice. For example, you want to install Apache, well, you need to install it, and then you need to clean everything because you do not want to get uh, crap, especially since you are likely using the cloud and paying by the gigabyte of uh, image that you are using. And yeah, there is no script automation like you have with RPM. Uh, I don't know if people did RPM. I did a lot since 10 years, but there is a lot of stuff that are done in an automated way that are not done. There is a whole caching side effect that I already complained, and I'm pretty sure everybody that used Docker did see that. It's like a make file, but recursive. Um, yeah, the uh, add operation is recursive, so if you have the good Docker file, you have no catch. And so I started to look at that, and I said, OK, what can I do to avoid uh, that? Because you cannot fix it. I mean, I cannot fix it because I'm uh, not a good developer. But even if I was a good developer, I could not, because I decided to froze it, which is also a good idea. So what can I do? And Ansible is really, really flexible. There is people using it inside Red Hat for QA testing. They find a bug, they get a playbook, they give it to the developer, the developer run it, fix it, and then suddenly it becomes a test. There is people using that for deploying their own uh, GNOME environment. Uh, there is people, I was using that on NetApp. I was using that for searching uh, home directory of user and everything. So, And the reason for that is there is a lot of plugins for Ansible. You can add your own module and everything. And there is one specific plugin that people seem to overlook. It's connection plugin. By default, Ansible uses just SSH, either Paramico or the command line SSH. Uh, there is uh, something for uh, chfoot. So you can, instead of connecting to a remote system, you just connect to your own chfoot if you want to configure. And I did create something to run Ansible on top of Funk. Uh, if people do not remember Funk, it's like M Collective or Soul Stack, uh, but older. I also did vote something to run Ansible on top of Soul Stack because it did look like a fun idea. It took me one year to fix, and it's still not working properly, but still fun. Or uh, for GustFS, you give a, a virtual machine uh, image, you start it, you modify with Ansible, you shut down. It's like Packer, but uh, using uh, my code. And so I started to say, yeah, maybe I can do something with Docker. So. I started first by using NSExec. Um, Docker works with the system of namespace, and you can use uh, NSExec. Jérôme Petazzoni, uh, working at Docker, wrote a blog post and said, oh, that looks like a smart ID. And it turned out that, no, it was not a smart ID because the PR got refused. One year after, Docker managed to get the Docker exec command. Someone, someone decided to create uh, a plugin for connecting to a Docker image directly. It got merged. And then someone, which is not me, uh, because I'm not an Ansible uh, container developer, just an Ansible developer, decided to create Ansible container like less than one year ago. And 
because the question is why do we want to do that if you can do everything directly with Ansible? And why do we want to do that if you already have a YAML file? Uh, no, not YAML file, Docker file. So why use Ansible container? So first, well, it's YAML. So it's kind of uh, machine readable, which means that you can uh, enforce uh, static checking. Another big issue with uh, Docker file is that you cannot reuse anything uh, easily. There is no support for a library or something like this. I do not know if there is something plain for that or if there is a community best practice. I still maintain uh, old stuff using uh, old methods. I'm not using this fancy uh, Docker stuff yet in production, waiting for people to deploy uh, everything for that. But uh, with Ansible container, you can use the role. Uh, so role in Ansible is a way to basically just reuse the code. You say, this server should be a SQL server, like Postgres, MySQL, SQLite if you want. I mean, I will not judge your choice. You just uh, put everything and then you assign the role to a server and that's it. You apply, it deploy. If you've done your job well, everything works. If you didn't, it do not work. You go back to fix and that's it. So that permit to reuse code, that permit to do composition. You want to deploy something like, I don't know, PHP BB. PHP BB requires to get a web server, requires to get PHP, requires to get a SQL database. Uh, then you can compose. And it's better because you can enforce be best practice on module side. I should have had something like to do because right now if you are using uh, anything to install package, you still need to clean. Um, you can more easily deploy with a different base image. And you got one single tool to learn, uh, especially if you got a legacy application. I mean, most people, except in startup who start from scratch, needs to maintain the old stuff, like, you know, the old Oracle database that permit everybody to be paid, because it turns out that's to be quite important to get money for your work, and this has to work. Mm -hmm. You have the container infrastructure that cannot be maintained in container for, well, obvious reason, and you have the whole container deployment. So I said, yeah, Ansible container is great, but uh, you promise in the abstract to show how it works and everything. So yeah, I did promise that. So if you want to use it, you can right now download from GitHub, which is best practice, curl pipe something, or you can use pip. If someone wants to make a package, it will be very, very nice. Uh, I'm too lazy to do one, but uh, I'm pretty sure that people have more free time than me. It starts with a workflow inspired by uh, Django and other. So I cannot say it's inspired by Django, but that's uh, one of the projects I know. In the sense that you start by doing Ansible container init in your source code. It will create a skeleton in a, a directory called Ansible, which contains some file, uh, more than two, but uh, I wanted that to be readable for people in the back. If they cannot hear me, at least they can uh, read that. And <coughs> the list exact of file is somewhere in the documentation. I don't plan to read the complete documentation, but at least to explain. So first, well, if you want to build a container, well, you got a YAML file, which is called main.yaml, which is a playbook. That's exactly the kind of playbook that you can use without Ansible containers that maybe you already like, maybe you already dislike, but if you dislike, I think that you are not gonna use Ansible containers, so let's pretend that everybody loves Ansible. It can use role, and it's executed inside a Docker container. So it's like managing your external services, except with container. So it's better, by definition. The inventory comes from container.yaml, which is a YAML file uh, similar, if I'm not wrong, to Docker Compose, similar to the point that you are supposed to be able to take a Docker Compose file and directly use it for container.yaml. Uh, it's explicitly written somewhere in a bug report that they want to keep compatibility. You can use, uh, there is a non-environment variable if you want to get a role that can be used inside and outside of the container because, again, you, most people do not migrate right away. And once you have your Docker image, you say, yeah, that's nice. It's taking space on my disk. What can I do with that? Well, it turns out that you can also run and deploy them. So everything goes back to uh, container.yaml. As I said, it's compatible to Docker Compose in the sense that you can take Docker Compose file for Ansible container, but uh, there is more addition. For example, there is a system of a Jinja variable. Uh, Jinja is a templating language used by Ansible and used by Python community and by the Django community, if I'm not wrong. Um, so the file contains a list of containers, the 
word of play was not uh, prepared. You can list the base image, the base image, the port, the volume. And something which is quite interesting is that you can decide to have an override for the configuration for specific stuff, like for development stuff. You can say, okay, uh, it's running on the developer laptop. I do not want to connect to the production database, so I will change the environment variable. So if someone do something like, oh, I want to see if I can remove everything, and it turns out that, well, this was a production database. Yeah, no, it will just crash something locally. You can do that to do some uh, smart uh, stuff with uh, using the source code directly on the disk, so it's faster for a developer to test and break, which is something that I was not able to do in the past. You, okay. you can get uh, option per deployment, uh, because once you have everything you want to deploy in a, on a cluster, so it turns out since that's uh, Red Hat uh, sponsored, uh, you have the choice between country and work. So you can use OpenShift, which is a tool on top of Kubernetes, or directly Kubernetes. Uh, if you want more, uh, it's on the roadmap, which means that there is a GitHub uh, bug open for that. And it's waiting for someone to push the code uh, since four months. And you can ship container which basically do not mean to put them in a boat uh, somewhere in Amsterdam and move them around the planet. It's just to push on a remote uh, registry. And it's even so great that uh, you can just generate a deployment playbook, which then became an Ansible playbook, ship it to OpenShift. We don't know exactly what it does, but after, there is profit. And so the tool is uh, quite new. Um, if it was uh, older, I would have said more. And the developer really want to get all kind of feedback because they are developers. I do not know if that's what the community want. So I'm trying to help them uh, to get some awareness about the tool. I'm pretty sure that they will be tomorrow. They will be there somewhere. I do not know what they look like. I mean, everybody looks the same. But um, if you go to Coffee Management Camp, there is an Ansible track. And you can discuss with them, say, yeah, that's a good idea. But what about that? Or that's a bad idea. And I do not want to speak to you anymore and just disappear can do what you want. And if you have any question, uh, please do so. Or you can just uh, do like me and run to get something to eat, because it's the time to eat. Right. Yeah, it was fast. So. Do you have demo or? No. I do not believe in the power of live demo, because it never works. But I can make a non-working demo without problem. Maybe it will work by error. Yeah, so if people have questions, yeah. uh, is there a mic or somewhere, something, or I need no, to you repeat? Have to you have to shout out and then you have to repeat the question. Okay, so. Uh, I heard similar. Uh, I run Ansible inside the Docker file, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, each time when I uh, run uh, Ansible, I make very little small change uh, in Ansible uh, playbook, and uh, I create new Okay, so the question. Okay, so the question is: Running Ansible inside Docker file result into big image, and people need to re-download it. And does the solution fix that? Uh, I think the, the answer is no. I know that there is something related to uh, layer squashing, which means that you will still get a big image. And I'm not sure that Ansible is the right place for that, uh, because if you just change two bytes, it should be the synchronization used by Docker or the registry to be smart. I mean, we have AirSync since 20 years, more. Maybe they could implement that, because it will fix the issue for everybody. Maybe there is technical reason to not implement that. I mean, I do not know the internal of Docker that well. So uh, does that answer the question? All right. Does that answer the question? No? Oh. So the answer is no, we do not have anything to fix the problem.
Uh, can you speak can you louder? Speak up, please. So there is a there is a bug open for supporting rocket. Is that the question? Uh, I cannot really hear, so I will just move. Yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so, uh, so the question is, is there, plan, is there plan to use a rocket? I know there is a bug open. I do not know how they want to use it. Um, I suspect since rocket is compatible with uh, Docker and you can use Docker image and everything, whatever you use at the back end do not matter that much and it should be quite easy to do. There is a bug open, uh, someone requesting feedback and uh, working on it. Uh, it's quite easy, there is like a five pull requests and a 40 uh, issues, so it's quite easy to find that. Uh, if you are a Python developer, you can take a look and uh, test and say it's working, it's not working. I think there is some interest, it's just that there is uh, two people right now on the project and they are traveling around to speak about the project. So if people who didn't left want to contact me, uh, there is my email and uh, that's it.